So this is the iPhone XR, Apple's alternative to the flagship iPhone XS model released in 2018. And due to the modern design and affordable price, the iPhone XR was a smash hit on launch. And at this point, I honestly don't think it would be unfair to say that the iPhone XR has almost become like a cult classic. People really like this phone and well, when I was presented with the choice, I personally opted to go for the iPhone 10 because I prefer smaller screens. This has been without a doubt by far the most requested phone for me to review ever. I picked one up and decided to use it. And so today we're going to be talking about what it's like a year and a half later and whether or not you should consider buying it in 2020. Let's find out. First off, as usual, we're going to be taking a look at the specs. The iPhone XR is rocking an A12 Bionic processor, 3 gigabytes of RAM, either 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of internal storage, which is a nice range. Me personally, I have the 64 gigabyte version. I generally like to go with the lowest storage option. I barely ever use even half of it. So I personally just prefer to save the money. However, if you play a lot of games or do something which requires a lot of internal storage, then it is nice that you have the option to upgrade. The iPhone XR weighs in at 194 grams, which is exactly the same way as the iPhone 11. And while this is a heavy phone, this is mostly due to the size and build materials, which we are going to be talking about later on. So not unexpected, and I haven't really had any issues adjusting to that heavier weight. Finally, there's a load of unique color options, including red, white, I, I can't remember them all. There is a lot. There is red, white, yellow, blue, coral, and the one I have here, black. As for the specs, other than the battery and the screen, which both get their own unique sections later on, that's pretty much it. I don't really like to talk too much about benchmarks in these videos. I personally think user experience is far more important. So we're going to be talking more about how this phone actually performs later on. In terms of build quality, well, it's an iPhone, which generally means two things. Very premium build, but also pretty damn fragile. Like all current iPhones, it features that glass back, which is great as it allows for wireless charging and overall just makes the phone feel a lot more premium. However, as usual, this does make the phone significantly more breakable. I've also found that with these bigger phones and the size of my hands, I am personally more likely to drop them. So me especially, I need to make sure I have a case on my phone. In fact, this one, I got free with the phone. Now, you may not drop your phone as much as me, but regardless, it might be worth checking on a case because breaking your phone back and inevitably paying for it to be repaired is never a good experience. This considered, the overall build quality of this phone does feel premium and the classic combination of glass and aluminium leads to a nice feeling, nice looking device. But as I said before, you will inevitably probably have to end up putting a case on it. Also, the screen is made of glass too. Another break point, but that's kind of obvious. So yeah, watch out for that one too. In terms of water resistance, the iPhone XR has has an IP67 rating, and this essentially means that it can survive in a meter of water for up to 30 minutes. Again, while I don't recommend relying on this, it is a nice failsafe to have if you accidentally like, I don't know, briefly go in the pool with the phone in your pocket. Just make sure it is brief though. So yeah, overall build quality is what I'd expect from this phone. Nice and premium, but as I said at the start, also pretty fragile. Next up, we're moving on to the screen, and I'm gonna be honest, this is an area where I wasn't expecting the iPhone XR to do all that well in. It doesn't have a blazingly high resolution like the flagship models have, reading in at 1792 by 828, with a PPI of 326 and a typical peak brightness of 625 nits. As usual, the iPhone XR includes a true tone display, which basically means your phone screen adjusts the temperature based on the lighting of your surroundings. I love this feature, and while it might not seem all that significant, I always think it's the little things that make up a user experience. Experience. So yeah, very glad that they included this. This phone also includes the 120Hz touch sensing feature. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't 120Hz refresh rate. Touch rate refers to the frequency of which your phone screen registers your finger. And so while not as cool as a 120Hz display, I think it's still a pretty cool feature. Now onto the actual panel quality. Initially, I did notice that lack of resolution as well as the LED panel. However, after using it for a little while, I did notice something interesting. I noticed the LED panel was significantly nicer to look at over long periods of time. And while the colors aren't as rich and saturated as they are on the OLED panels, I realized it's not that big of a deal. While it's nice to have the option of a really nice punchy look on your phone screen, most of the time I didn't really mind. Initially, as I said, I did notice the lower resolution, but I'm gonna be totally honest, after a while I did get used to it, and honestly at arm's length I can't really tell anyway. So yeah, for me at least, not really an issue. In terms of size, this is an area that I found a little bit difficult to deal with on the iPhone 11. I just felt it was a little bit too big for me. That said, after using the iPhone XR, I think it's something that I could very much get used to. One immediate advantage that I noticed was I was much more accurate in my typing, which was honestly nice. Again, it's the little things that make up a user experience. In terms of the secondary interaction with this screen, the iPhone XR has haptic touch rather than the 3D touch that I'm personally used to. While I have historically said that I personally prefer 3D touch, I've got used to haptic touch and honestly, I do believe it's the future. And while it can initially feel a little weird, I haven't noticed a dramatic slowdown in my interaction with the phone, so I don't really consider this a con. At this point, I simply consider this an alternative interaction method 
method that does help me better interact with my phone. So yeah, regardless, I personally consider this a plus. All in all, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't expecting to like the screen on this thing. However, after using it for a period of time, the added size was actually quite nice, and once I got used to the LED panel and slightly lower resolution, I actually really enjoyed the screen on this thing. In terms of button layout, well, <laughs> it's a notched iPhone, so it's the same as the rest. As usual, all the buttons feel well thought out with the separate volume buttons, the mute switch, and the isolated lock button, which is pretty standard for any iPhone. However, all the buttons feel really nice and tactile, which just makes the phone feel that much more premium. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting this, especially after using the higher end iPhones with the steel sides. Don't get me wrong, I was expecting it to be good, but I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Now, this may be because over time my iPhone 10 buttons may have lost some of their tactility, but still, it was something that I found interesting. Yeah, overall, very satisfied with the button layer on the iPhone 10 Of course, I do have my usual complaints. I don't like accessing Siri with the lock button. I also don't like how easy it is to take a screenshot. In fact, earlier, I was clear up my library. There were so many screenshots. It is very easy to accidentally take a screenshot. Be aware of that. But yeah, no new complaints here and overall I'm very satisfied with this phone. Moving on we have the Face ID and it's pretty good. Don't get me wrong, it's not quite as good as the 11 line where you can literally like have it on a table and then swipe up and still unlock your phone. But it's super consistent, it's fast, it works well in low light and overall very few complaints here. Moving on, we have the camera. Now, the camera has always been an essential part of the phone for me, so it's important that it's good. And when I initially saw the traditional single lens setup of the iPhone XR, I wasn't expecting it to blow me away. However, I'm pleasantly surprised with the iPhone XR. That said, I have had some issues with it. In terms of the camera specs, as I said before, the iPhone XR features a single lens camera system with a resolution of 12 megapixels and an aperture of f1.8. The front facing camera, however, has a resolution of seven megapixels and an aperture of f2.2. Honestly, there's nothing really mind-blowing about these specs. However, specs can be deceiving with cameras, so I want to take a look at how this thing actually performs. Taking photos on the iPhone XR was a pretty great experience, honestly. I noticed that all the photos have a really good amount of dynamic range and sharpness, and while not as saturated as some of the new iPhones, I personally think it could still hold up well today. It does well in all the important areas, and essentially, that's the most important thing. While I did initially think that I would be limited by the single focal length, because the focal length is so versatile, I've rarely found myself struggling while using this phone. Now, that's not to say I wouldn't like a second focal length. Obviously, I would. But for most people, I don't think it's necessary. In terms of the app, for obvious reasons, this one doesn't have the new interface found on the 11 line and the new SE. But I personally still prefer this because it's much easier to take burst photos. And while it is more difficult to switch frame rates when shooting video, for me, I think this is worth the trade-off. Speaking of video performance, the main camera, as is common with the notch side phone line, shoots 4K up to 60fps, which is really nice for capturing some ultra-smooth motion. However, I personally like to take that 60 FPS footage and then stretch it out to 24 FPS so you get a really high resolution, really nice looking slow motion clip. The iPhone XR also shoots 1080p slow motion in up to 240 FPS. And while this certainly shouldn't be used in anything that requires quality, it can be useful for if you need that extreme slow motion. So while I wouldn't recommend it for anything high end, for just some casual water splashes or things of that nature, this will do just fine. The front facing camera can also shoot video. However, no 4K is available in this mode. You can only shoot in up to 1080p in up to 60 FPS. So for anything requiring quality, I would recommend the main camera, but for convenience, it should do just fine. Okay, now we're going to be talking about probably my biggest complaint about the photo abilities on this phone, the portrait mode. I can forgive it for not having a second angle, but the fact that they limited portrait mode to only work on people is ridiculous. This was also the case in that new iPhone SE that I reviewed a while back. Oh, there. And while I do think it is slightly more appropriate for this phone seeing as it is older, and despite the fact that this was never the flagship offering in 2018, it still, in my opinion, shouldn't be limited in this way. Now, of course, there are third-party solutions like Halide, but I don't think this should be necessary. When it does work, it does work very well as expected, and this is the case for both the main and the front-facing camera. I just wish they'd included the full portrait mode here. Overall, as I said, while there are some annoying limitations, the camera performance is very good, and for most people, I think this will be great. Now, we're moving on to probably the most important part, OS and app performance. The iPhone 10 are shipped with iOS 12, and assuming the typical Apple life cycle, so five versions of iOS, the iPhone 10 are still has two and a half years of updates left, which is always good to know. Scrolling through the OS, opening apps, and controlling the interface are all pretty seamless, and I've rarely had issues. In terms of more demanding tasks like using apps or playing games, when scrolling through social media or watching YouTube videos, performance has always been pretty much flawless, and there were never any concrete issues. In terms of gaming, well, in my use case, I do mostly play casual games, but in my time using this phone, I did make sure 
sort of tried multiple games and they all worked fine. Now in the future, there might be some super demanding game, but honestly for now, performance is pretty good. After this, we have these speakers. The iPhone XR uses that dual stereo system, which has been the standard in iPhone since the iPhone 7. And this essentially uses both the top and the bottom speaker in conjunction to create that more full sounding sound. Full sounding sound. Couldn't have worded that better. I have casually listened to music on these things quite a lot during my time using it. And I haven't found myself needing better speakers. Wanting better speakers? Yes. But for casual listening or just like watching films on your phone, these will do just fine. Finally, we have the battery life. Now the iPhone XR was marketed as a phone with fantastic battery life, but just how true was that? And is it still good all this time later? My personal 10R has 100% battery health. And honestly, during my time using it, it's been pretty stellar. With normal usage, I can always get through the day and I usually have a little left at the end before I need to plug it in. Now, this may be down to the lower resolution LED screen, but still, battery life has been great. All right, so what do I think of this phone? As I said at the start of the video, the iPhone 10R has a big fan base of loyal users and I can see why. Throughout my time using this phone, it's been nothing short of a pleasure to use. And at times, I've genuinely been considering switching to this thing. But yeah, I honestly think this is a great value entry point into the notch line of iPhones. And if you're okay with the size, the screen, and the single camera, then honestly, I think this phone is pretty phenomenal. All right, guys, so that's it for today. By the way, let me know what you think of this lighting. Just got some, like, color gels. I'm honestly really digging the look. As for now, though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video. If you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.